What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Typically, I like to use projects that are really more flushed out, things that are a bit more polished, but today, Today I'm going to show you something that's a little bit, I don't know, bleeding edge, but it's so cool I just had to show it to you guys. Also, one of the reasons why I wanted to show this thing off is because I want the community to try to support it a little bit more. I want to see more devs get on board because there's so many cool possibilities that, I mean, I just want more of you guys to see it. Now, a few of you really astute viewers out there might remember at some point I actually mentioned a device that you plug into the Flipper Zero that interfaces with Game Boy games. Well, that device was actually called the Malvike. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And its creator, Esteban Fuente Alba, has done that and so much more. It's got so many more features than just a Game Boy device. It's really kind of a jackknife in itself. All right, that's enough intro for now. Let's roll up our sleeves and check out the Malvike. Man, I just kind of love saying that. Let's go. So when I first heard of this project, it was actually from a YouTube short that Esteban uploaded himself. Now, I gotta say he did a fantastic job just making and editing this video. It's super engaging. So I figured, hey, what better place to start than checking out his video? So let's hop on down to desktop and give it a watch. All right, here we are at Esteban's YouTube channel. Uh, let's give it a watch, let's see what it's all about. Your Flipper Zero got bored? Here comes a new challenger. Now, I just gotta say, again, like his editing style, this whole thing, the audio in the background, obviously that 8-bit audio, I love it, but he does such a great job on this video. This is one of the things that got me so hyped about this project. All right, sorry about that, let's go. Can't lie, I was also really psyched to see he has the uh, the resin clear print from PCBWay or wherever he printed it from, but that's definitely Kraken's model. Big ups to ZR Kraken, Uwu Kraken for making the clear flipper shell. Everybody loves it. Back at it. So yeah, I mean, after seeing that video, I was so psyched to check this thing out. I mean, can you blame me? That thing's sick. So I immediately reached out to Esteban and he actually sent me a unit to take a look at. This thing is so cool. Let's switch to the top down camera and take a look. All right, so introducing the Malvi. This thing is super, super cool. Let's uh, switch over to autofocus or manual focus, take a closer look at it. All right, so first thing I gotta point out is just how good this packaging is. Like, it's a really nice box. It's even got Malvike, little holographic with a flipper sticker seal on it. Like, this thing is so nice. He did a fantastic job just putting this little package together. All right, so let's get the uh, tape off. I don't want to rip it because it's really nice. That's, hold on, eh, knife. Told you I had a lot of knives. There we go. Pop it open. Ugh, latch. Couldn't possibly have done this in a less graceful way. And here we are. It's the Malvike. Now we'll notice already it's got a little thing hanging off here, which if we flip this over, we can see why. It has an ESP32, and this is a room. ESP32 room, so really cool to have that on board. So yeah, you can actually set this up with uh, ESP32 Marauder, just like any other ESP board, and do war driving and stuff with it, because it also has a, a GPS right here that we can plug into. You'll notice also it has an NRF and a CC1101 flag, so you can go between the two of those. That makes this thing actually super, super useful without any of the Game Boy functionality, which is really cool. What's also really cool is today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now I've spoken about all of the cool things that PCBWay can do for you. However, did you know that they can actually help you design your own PCBs? They have a professional team of expert engineers that will be there to help you through every step of the way. From schematic design to PCB layout, all the way out to rapid prototype, 
typing. They can help you with all of it. They can help you design enclosures for your projects as well. And of course, print them for you as well. Do you need software developed? Well, guess what? They've got you covered there too. So check out all of PCBWay's design services linked down below. As always, thank you so much for the continued support, PCBWay. You guys are fantastic. Let's get back at it. What's also really cool is he actually sends all of the stuff for it. So let's see if we can assemble this. It's gonna be a bit of a hot mess, but well, we can put the GPS on like that. Ugh. GPS is on. So we got our dangly antenna. And then we can throw, let's say the NRF on here. So it plugs that in like that. So eh. there we go. So this is actually currently a multi-board that does uh, mouse jacking with the NRF24. And then it can do war driving with the GPS module and the ESP32. This thing's so cool. And it's got an external antenna. Like, again, even if this wasn't a Game Boy thing, this thing would be worth it already just for this functionality. So let me go ahead and unplug all these things so I don't break anything. There we go. And actually for today, I'm actually gonna unplug this on antenna. It's just gonna be a little annoying to film with. There we go, I didn't break it, I don't think. And then, yeah, so this thing's super cool. We'll even notice up top here, yeah, you can see it's a, it's a three-way switch for the external, the RF, or the GPS, depending upon what you're using at the moment. Changes power rails and stuff like that. Very, very cool. And then, turn that off. Just like any other ESP32, you've got a boot and a reset button right there, which again, that makes it really easy for you to reprogram the chip and you need to. So yeah, super, super cool. Just one quick thing to remember too, is because there's no USB on this, you will want to flash it using the ESP Flasher app that's inside Flipper itself. The one that Coco Code made for the other Wi-Fi boards. And if we're further looking at it, we can see, obviously I've got a original copy of Tetris plugs right in there and then yeah you've got yourself a uh, a Game Boy cartridge that we can plug into our flipper how cool is that all right let's do a little housekeeping and we're clean look at that best transition ever so I guess the first thing you do is just to simply plug these guys together boom boom and you can see the power lights on all right so let's go into the Game Boy cartridge app because we can actually read this cartridge right now I am currently running the latest version of Rogue Master because they conveniently enough have a section just for the Malvik already so I don't have to go and run all these and especially because flip C is down I don't want to have to compile my own firmware so yeah there we go connect to it and then cartridge information. We can see already, this is what's actually on this cart already. Save type, it says none, because I'm pretty sure the battery on this cart's dead. Let's go back and check another game and see what that says. All right, so this adorable cottage core looking game right here is actually Pokemon Red. I got this from, uh, from Awok. He graciously let me borrow his favorite Game Boy, which is very, very nice. I'll show you in a second. But let's see what this reads. Connects, cartridge information, and Oh, again, ROM size and save type none. Interesting. Boot logo. We plugged in all the way. Now, notice, I don't think this is an original cartridge. I think this might be a repop, but I'm not 100% sure because, yeah, it's interesting. It doesn't read anything right. Let's try this one more time. See if cha anything changes. Cartridge information. Oh, okay, cool. There it goes. It shows up right. I probably just didn't have it plugged in all the way. And, yeah, it shows all those things. So the boot logo, you can change the boot logo. Uh, however, what Esteban says is when you do that, it won't actually play the game because the Game Boy itself checks to see if it has the original boot logo on there. So this is why I want more people to see this product because the more devs involved, the more we can kind of make this stuff happen. But super cool. It knows it's Pokemon Red. Very, very cool. So let's try, um, let's try the link cable. Let's see if we can get Pokemon trading to work because that would be super cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit out, go to the main area here. And then I know, where was it on here? I think it's in GPIO, did I skip it? I'm already in GPIO, okay, cool. And let's see, is Pokemon Trader in here? Do, 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 do. Pokemon Trading, cool, it's right there. So let's open that. I'm gonna pull off the cart because it doesn't need to be in the Malvike. It needs to be in the Game Boy. So let me put this down and grab our Game Boy. All right, now this absolute gorgeous unit of a Game Boy is actually AWOC's Game Boy. Now, unfortunately with my lighting, it's gonna be a little hard to see with the glare, but yeah, we're just hanging out in Pokemon right now. I already walked to a Pokemon trainer, so we should be able to hook this right up using the link cable. So we're gonna go to continue and with any luck, we're still in, nope, we're over here now, uh-oh. Where do I get there? So let me go, uh, let me go walk and find where I need to go. Just a second. Well, do you right back. And then 
this little person up here. I should be able to talk to them, and then we can do a little link. So let me grab my let me grab my limp, link cable. Let me grab my link cable. So one of the cool things is they actually give you a link cable in this kit. So we can unwrap this. Do 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 do. And then if you look out on here too, which is really interesting, is that there are two different link ports on here. This top one is hooked up to the Flipper Zero. However, this bottom one actually hooks up to the ESP32. So the idea is that you can wirelessly trade stuff and do things online or over a Wi-Fi network, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and plug this into here. Hopefully this goes this way. Eh, there we go. And plug the other one into the Game Boy. Snug fit, but it's in. And then let's see if we can make this all work. All right, so how it works is basically we have a Pokemon here, which is currently a Bulbasaur. What do we got here? I can go through anywhere here. Nice. Let's um, let's do. I guess it doesn't matter, but uh, let's go with B Drill. Sure, why not? Na nickname B Drill. I'm gonna say let's change his name to Squatch, just so we know what's going on. To you, a cool save. Oops, I don't need the space. Get out of there. Save. Level. Let's make this level 9. Do I know? Let's do 20. 25, because it's easier. Save. Let's go. Select moves. Okay, cool. So we can do all sorts of good stuff. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah, let's just give him some moves. I don't really care that much. Proof of concept. But barrage. Cool. Now we set our games. Random other stuff. ID number. OT name. All right, so let's do trade Pokemon. Connect to Game Boy, so that should be good. Now, all I should have to do right now is go to the trainer. So let's do that. Back into here, and it's really impossible to see, but welcome to the Cable Club. We're making preparations. Please wait. Huh. Wonder what that means. Let me look that up and see what's going on. So I spent another like 15 minutes trying to troubleshoot. I'm really honestly not entirely sure what's going on. I honestly also never really played Pokemon as a kid, so I've never actually traded Pokemon on Game Boy. This is kind of what I was talking about up top where, you know, not everything works exactly the way I think it would work. So probably means just I'm doing it wrong. But again, I think it's such a cool project that I really want to show it to you. Now, there are a bunch of other features that they're working on. Also, if you remember from the video that I just showed, it does have integration with the Game Boy camera, which I also, I mean, I got Awok to send me his really nice Game Boy, but I haven't been able to track down a Game Boy camera that wasn't like 80 bucks. And I mean, again, you can kind of see from the video exactly what this does. We've done the ESP camera before on the flipper. You know, the results are pretty much the same. But yeah, with the Malvk, it has a uh, Game Boy cartridge reader that I showed you earlier. Um, it will do the same for Game Boy Advance cartridges. It will copy photos, which you mentioned with the camera. It can do a live camera, which I'm assuming because it's got an ESP32, it can transfer over Wi-Fi. Then they're working on a printer link cable because there was a printer that went with the Game Boy camera. Um, a logo generator, again, trying to change the logo in the beginning of the screens. Uh, we talked about how you can't do it super well yet. They haven't figured a workaround to make it work and play the game at the same time obviously the pokemon trading and there's a game boy emulator that i want to show you it's kind of emulating the way game boy works um well let's look at the video and i'll explain so this is an unlisted video from esteban's youtube channel so you can't really find it yourself however it does show you exactly how it works now he's got some commentary going on but he does speak spanish so i'll kind of explain what's going on so what's what he's done basically is flashed the actual rom to the esp32 and it actually is playing a demo right now of Super Mario on the flipper screen itself. Because the controls aren't ported over, you can't really control anything. So it's just playing the actual Super Mario demo that would play if you weren't pressing any buttons on your Game Boy. And yeah, it's really cool. There are two options. It will go from basically panning around the screen like he's doing right now. Or you can, as you press the back button, it looks like, or the side button, it will switch to effectively trying to show everything on the really small flipper screen, which obviously individual results may vary. But it is a very, very cool proof of concept. Yes, it seems to run very, very slowly, again, because limiting hardware, but doesn't mean it's not cool. But yeah, that's the Mal-VK. It's such an interesting piece of hardware. It's so, not wacky, but it's just out there. And it does so many things too. Again, he's got GPS, CC1101, so sub gigahertz range extender, NRF24, which is mouse jacking with an ESP32. It's a super capable chipset. 
It's really cool. If you find this interesting, I've got links down below where you can get a Malvik and also links to the GitHub so you can see all the software and apps you've got written for it. I would love to see the community back up this project and make more and more stuff because I really honestly believe there's an endless list of possibilities that this board can do. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. That stuff helps me tremendously. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.